Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, Burlington, North Carolina, for this service of morning prayer. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to Him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, the heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the and our life. Oh, come, let us worship Him. The first reading is from the book of Jonah. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed His mind about the calamity that He had said He would bring upon them, and He did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun, sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, 
for which you did not labor, for, and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night, and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? The Word of the Lord. The appointed psalm is from Psalm 145. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. The second reading is from the book of Philippians. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of, your, of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go and work in the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to these last the same as I give to you. 
Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In many and various ways, God spoke to the people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. There's a whiteness in God's mercy, like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is that liberty there is no place where sorrows lie more found than up in heaven there is no place where failings have such kindly judgment given there is welcome for the sinner and a promise grace made good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in his blood. There is grace enough for thousands of new worlds as great as this. There is room for fresh creations in that upper home of bliss. eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Grant to all nations justice and peace. Preserve our country from discord and strife. Direct and guard those who have civil authority. And bless and guide all our people. We pray the same for the rest throughout the world. We lift before you all who serve their country, whether peacekeepers or in the military, that theirs may be a holy calling that serves for the sake of others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we hold before you all who are in danger, need, or tribulation. We pray especially for those whose lives are affected by storm or fire or any kind of natural disaster. Watch over all people, heal the sick, strengthen families and friends, bring reconciliation to families and discord. Provide for the unemployed and for all who are in need. Be merciful to all who are imprisoned. Support, comfort, and guide all orphans, widowers, and widows, 
and have mercy on all your people who are in any kind of need in mind, body, or spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity, and in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty bless us and direct our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Again, we thank you for joining us for this service of morning prayer at St. Paul's Lutheran, Burlington, North Carolina. There is a link provided in the video description that will take you to our Facebook page where there is a sermon printed on today's readings. May the peace of the Lord be with you.